Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Foligan, and in this video we are going to be looking at how to paint skin. Now I get asked a lot about how I paint my characters, so I thought I'd make a video about it. If you guys want to follow along, you can download this file for free over on gumroad.com slash foligan. So there's not actually all that much detail on this character sculpturally. There's not really any high resolution details, pores, or anything like that. So a lot of the work that we're going to have to do here is going to be in our paint to make up for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into step one on our painting process here. I wanted to include this in the video because I know a lot of you are very curious about what kind of materials I use. Uh, so in this video in particular, I will be using the Zebro Viewport Skin 3 material. There are a bunch of different materials that Zebro has created over the years, and you can download them for free over on his blog. So after you've imported or chosen your material that you're going to be working with, the first step is to just go ahead and fill in our material and set up our color. So I like to use uh, a nice skin tone uh, that's kind of in the middle of the spectrum. So in this case, I'm just using kind of a nice orangish red uh, right about here in the middle of the color spectrum. If you guys want the specific color value that I'm using, you can see the RGB values here. And to apply that color, we just want to make sure that RGB or MRGB is turned on for our brush and RGB intensity is all the way up to 100. And then we just want to fill in the entire thing. Now, whatever color you choose to begin with, it's not going to be super important. It could be right in the middle of the spectrum. It could be super vibrant. It could be even super saturated. You know, it, it's not really a huge deal. The uh, point is that we don't want to pick something super dark or super light. Uh, because then later on it's going to make it really hard to kind of neutralize some of these colors and get a nice even skin tone. So just pick something, you know, a little bit desaturated, I would say, somewhere in the middle of the color uh, spectrum over there. So the face can be broken down into three main color segments. The yellow or white of the brow, the red cheeks and nose, and then the blue slash greenish color or grayish color of the chin. Now it's actually quite a bit more complicated than this in terms of skin tone, but this is a really good way to begin blocking out your colors and setting everything up for uh, starting to add layers of paint later on. So it's going to feel very kind of clown makeup-y in the beginning, but uh, eventually it will start to come together. So to actually start painting on our model, before we do anything else, we just want to make sure that our brush is set to RGB only, and we want our RGB intensity to be pretty low. I recommend setting it to something around 5 to 15. Uh, around there should be a pretty good level to where we're not getting a super hard cutoff between our colors. Uh, for example of what that looks like, if I just grab a quick little green here and start to paint this on my model, you can see how sharp of a fall off uh, there is between these two colors. And if I'd like to kind of try to blend between those, it's actually pretty difficult to do, even though I have a uh, pressure sensitive pen here. Uh, whereas if I set the RGB intensity value here to five, I can get quite a bit more range in terms of color. So I can do something really light. I can still do some really dark colors and get that green perfectly, but it's a lot easier for me to kind of blend between those as well as uh, get a lot more subtleties here. Uh, but subtlety is not the name of the game right now, so uh, go ahead, set that RGB, like I said, to about 5 or so. Grab just a nice, bright yellow color, uh, as saturated as you want. It's not really super important, uh, but just as long as we're getting a, a nice, clean yellow on there. And then I am going to turn on symmetry and just go ahead and start filling in the forehead of my character. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for my cheek area. Just grab a nice red and just kind of fill that in and start painting that. Again, it's going to look really awkward and kind of clown passy, but just make sure you get the ears here as well all the way back. And go ahead and we'll just grab that yellow again. Uh, as a quick little hotkey for you guys, that's something that I find very useful. If you uh, just press the C key, uh, on your keyboard, you can go ahead and sample any color underneath your pen. That also includes stuff in your user interface, which is really nice. Uh, but at least in this case, if we want to grab some red and switch back to yellow, we can just press C and swap back between that really quick there. Let's go ahead and grab our blue to finish things off here. 
and just go ahead and fill in that area around the chin. So like I said, the colors of the face are actually quite a bit more complicated uh, than what we're looking at here, but this is how we have to start. We have to start building it layer by layer and kind of working our way up. So this is kind of base layer here, and uh, from here we're essentially just going to start adding uh, our next layer, which is going to be the difference between bony landmarks and fleshy areas. As you can see at this point, it still kind of feels very much like uh, she's wearing some clown makeup, feels very awkward and uh, kind of heavily painted on. Uh, but as you'll see very soon here, uh, we'll start to kind of uh, clean this up just a little bit more. So the way we want to start is by looking for our uh, few bony landmarks here. So that includes anywhere like the forehead, the bridge of the nose, the chin, uh, the cheekbones, uh, a lot of this is determined on uh, how much uh, fat there is in the face of your character, uh, but for the most part, a pretty good rule of thumb would be uh, those few areas there. So let's just grab a softer color here. I'll put it in a, a little bit more of a warm spectrum and just grab kind of a nice off-white. And from here, let's just go ahead and start filling in areas like the bridge of our nose and up to the brow. And I'm pressing fairly lightly when I do this. It's okay to be pretty heavy-handed at this point. Uh, we're not really uh, too concerned about how, um, how strong a lot of this is feeling right now. Very soon we will um, start to kind of neutralize these colors and blend them back to our original skin tone. So this is a very, um, very rough kind of block out of where we want these colors to be. Uh, but now we want to start to bring it a little bit uh, closer back to our original skin tone. And to do that, I'm going to press the C key and sample the skin tone that I used to fill in my character earlier. And essentially what we're going to do is try to fill that in uh, once again. So there are two major ways to go about this process. Uh, I'll show you the kind of easier way first, and then I'll show you the uh, more tailored way that you have a little bit more control over. Uh, so the first way is to use your RGB intensity and just fill in the color as a whole. So normally if you press this fill object button and RGB intensity is all the way up, it'll just fill it in completely. But if you turn this value down to say something like 25, it'll only fill in about 25% of this color. So we can just go ahead and click on that and we'll do it maybe one more time there. And as you can see, it starts to neutralize the face uh, back to something a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more fleshy. So that's the first way. Uh, but the way that I prefer is to just keep everything the way we had it and kind of just paint in by hand very gently with my paintbrush. So I'll just go back through and start to fill in some of these areas around the brow, around the cheeks, just where things are super exaggerated. And just kind of take my time filling in some of this and neutralizing some of these uh, more saturated colors back to something that feels a little bit more natural. Now, we're not going for uh, perfect right now. We still want to have a little bit of that uh, yellow and red and blue poking through at this stage. But about here is uh, a pretty good place to uh, continue moving forward. So I think I'll leave her there and we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So we started to get a little bit of contrast with some of these uh, kind of bony landmarks and starting to paint those in. Uh, but now we want to start getting something uh, a little bit more contrasty between our warmer and cooler colors. So if you're unfamiliar with this idea, the basic principle is that if we have some warmer colors in our light, our shadowed areas uh, want to have some cooler colors. Uh, and vice versa, if your, your light is uh, a little bit more cool, having some warmer shadows often contrasts that quite nicely. So let's go ahead and start doing that next. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and sample with the C key here and grab this nice uh, red color here and then we'll just kind of uh, adjust that a little bit and we'll just keep that in the red spectrum for now. And I'll just make my brush pretty large. You don't want to have a super small uh, draw size at this point because then you end up with a lot of little patches and things aren't blended super well. So especially in these early areas, I recommend a nice big draw size for this. So let's just go ahead and paint in a little bit more of some warm color right around here in the cheek and around the uh, lips a little bit. 
So I'll just kind of fill that in really generally. Remember, a nice large brush here. We don't need to uh, worry about getting everything perfect at this stage. Uh, it's actually going to slow us down to do anything like that right now. Uh, and then I'll just kind of carry some of that around some parts of my ear. My ear is already uh, still super red right now. So I think I need to neutralize that with some cooler colors. Let's just go ahead and sample this blue here and we'll get something a little bit darker somewhere around right there. looks good to me. All right, so let's go ahead and fill in some of these cavities in our ear and just go ahead and start painting in some of this here. Now at this stage, we're not super concerned about being heavy handed or anything like that. So we're still fine to kind of continue uh, being a little brutish with some of our paint. I'll go ahead and uh, add some of this around the brow as this is typically uh, an area that would be in shadow and just kind of paint in uh, very generically around here. I'll also add a little bit of that underneath our uh, jawline down to our neck and maybe just a little bit more under the eye here. And I think that looks pretty good for now. So we're starting to get a lot more contrast in these areas of the face. It's starting to feel like there's a lot more depth going on, uh, but things are starting to feel uh, just a little too clowny uh, still. So let's go ahead and start neutralizing this a little bit more uh, back to a more standard skin tone. So let's just grab our skin tone here. And this time I'm gonna take the easy way out, I think using the uh, RGB intensity at around 25 or so, and just click on fill object. And I think um, just once here, we'll, we'll see what two times looks like. I think we start to lose just a little bit too much of uh, some of the colors that we've built up here, but I like the direction that that is going. So I'll just undo that for now. Uh, I think uh, I wanna keep a lot of this uh, value and saturation in here still. So we just looked at adding some warmer and cooler colors uh, to try to add a little bit more contrast to specific areas of our face. The next thing that we're gonna be looking at is hand painting shadows. So hand painting shadows or just adding certain areas of uh, occlusion is something that I really like to do to make my characters pop, uh, specifically around the eyes, uh, the nostrils, the ears, the mouth can be a really good area to help uh, occlude some of that especially depending on your lighting situation, it can be a little awkward. You do have to be really, really careful with hand painting shadows though, because it's incredibly easy to overdo. And when it's overdone, it looks really bad. So I recommend erring on the side of caution here. Uh, and essentially, you know, less is more. So let's just go ahead and grab uh, maybe a pure black or just a slightly off black color. And remember when we're using our darker areas, uh, we want to add a little bit of some cooler colors in there. So around there, just a little bit of blue and we should be good to go ahead and add in some of this, uh, some of this darker paint here. So I'm going to fill in my character's mouth really quick here. Uh, I have what's called a mouth bag on this character. Excuse the uh, disturbing imagery for just a moment as we kind of look at this inside of our character's mouth. And I'm just gonna select a couple things here and just do a quick mask and fill that in. Let me swap my mask around and I'll just crank that up, fill object. All right, so we got that out of the way. That's the easy one. And the only reason I'm doing that is because of the viewport lighting in ZBrush, it tends to uh, light up the inside of your character's mouth a little bit too much. And I think it looks pretty awkward while we're sitting here painting our character. So we'll just darken that for now and kind of move on. So another area that's really nice to add some of this uh, darker paint is right around here in the nostrils. Uh, like I said, uh, it's really easy to overdo some of this stuff and get it to look uh, really bad really fast. So let's go a little bit more, uh, a little bit more subtle here and maybe even add a little bit of shadow here on the underside of our nose. Just a little bit, very subtle. If we undo back and forth between those, you can kind of see the difference. Very small change, but uh, it does add uh, a lot of depth and that's what it's all about, you know, going through one layer at a time. So next let's go ahead up here to our eyes and just work on that top eyelid just a little bit here and start occluding some of that area paint in some of those shadows in that area just a little bit more. And then for the eyelashes, 
Uh, as you can see, this geometry is something that I just pulled out directly from the uh, uh, geometry of the eyelid. Uh, so it's not a separate mesh or anything like that. So it's very hard for me to get in and paint this kind of thing. Uh, I do have a poly group set up for that, but because the geometry is so stretched, uh, it's very, very difficult for me to get in and paint this. So I'm going to use some uh, selections with the select lasso to get in here really fast and just paint this up super duper quick. All right, let's take a look at our ears next. And it looks like they are uh, still a little bit uh, too heavy on the shadows. So I think we'll leave those alone for now. I think the areas that we have added shadow to are definitely adding quite a bit more depth to our character. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step from here. And because we just painted our eyelashes, let's go ahead and add some quick paint to our eyebrows. Uh, we have some pretty simple just strokes from a clay brush here and they are asymmetrical. A few different parts on this character are asymmetrical, so I will have to uh, adjust some of these things a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, uh, as you've probably noticed, pretty much everything we've done has been uh, a symmetrical operation. If your character is not symmetrical, you, you will have a little bit more work, but you know, for the most part, like I said up to this point, we've been using a pretty large brush, so I don't think it should be uh, too much extra work in that regard. All right, we filled those in, so now we're ready for the next step, which is going to be uh, a little bit of neutralizing our color, but uh, for the most part, I consider this the blending phase. So in particular, what I like to do during this phase is turn off symmetry and just sample local colors from my character and maybe make uh, a few minor adjustments to what I'm using. Uh, but let's go ahead and start up here in the uh, brow region uh, by adjusting and cleaning up the edge of our eyebrow. And I'll just kind of use a relatively small brush here to uh, help taper that, that paint that I had from earlier. Our face still looks like it has this really strong separation between yellow, red, and blue areas in our face, which is definitely what we want, but I think it's still a little bit too heavy handed. So I'm going to uh, sample this kind of uh, neutral tone on my face, as well as a little bit more of this uh, uh, saturated orange here, orangish red. I'll maybe make that a little bit stronger over here. Remember that we are using a very low RGB intensity, uh, but you still want to be very careful with your pen. Uh, if you are using a mouse, I recommend setting your RGB intensity value uh, even lower here. I just want to go through and start gently painting in some of this area to kind of neutralize a little bit of this as well as kind of just blend between these different areas of my face. And I do this asymmetrically uh, just because I think it adds quite a bit more depth uh, to our character. So everything doesn't feel super symmetrical. There are some areas that are, you know, a little uh, bit asymmetrical in terms of larger colors here, uh, which is really nice because once we start getting into details, if the only thing that is symmetrical in our paint is the uh, fine details, well then things are going to feel really boring. So let's go ahead and start doing that now while we still can. And don't forget about the parts that are maybe hidden underneath accessories or hair or anything like that. You want to make sure that you paint your entire character here. And speaking of painting our entire character, let's go ahead and fix some of this stuff in our ears, as well as our character's neck. I'll just kind of bring some of that more saturated value, I think, down here into our neck, as well as get rid of a little bit of those super heavy shadows here around the chin. And we'll just start kind of cleaning this up ever so slowly, one layer at a time. This is the part where things really start coming together in my opinion. Uh, and we start moving uh, just far enough away from that kind of clowny paint feeling to where things uh, start really feeling like they're kind of full of life here. All right, so at this point, I think we could call most of our work here finished, but if we'd like to kind of take this to the next level, which, you know, I always like to do, this is when I would start adding details like freckles or, you know, any kind of scarring, you know, sky's the limit here in terms of details depending on your character. Obviously, we're not going to have any scars on our character here, so maybe we could add in a couple freckles as well as play around with blending some colors, adding a bit more kind of a... Uh, darker eyeshadow or anything like that. 
uh, anything that kind of changes the mood of our character, now is the time to do it. So one thing that I really like to experiment with is adding some darker colors around my character's eyes, especially on my female faces. I find that it gives a nice kind of smoky eye shadow feel as well as uh, add a little bit more depth to this area. Especially since eyes are uh, a hugely important part of your character and they're one of the first things that people pay attention to on your character's face. So let's go ahead and add in a little bit of that smoky eye shadow just to get an idea of what that might look like. So I'm just gonna grab maybe around here in the, the purple region. We don't need to go super saturated. This is going to be a, a pretty subtle effect, but you know, you can play around with it and maybe go a little bit more heavy handed. Maybe we'll experiment just to kind of see what that would look like. And just start to add in with just a couple brush strokes here. Now, like I said, it's really easy to go uh, super heavy handed in this kind of stuff and start to feel like your character has a, uh, a black eye or something like that. So definitely uh, the more subtle you can go with a lot of this stuff, I think it starts to feel a bit more natural. And I'm going to pull in a little bit more orange or red right around here, the bottom of my eye. Just give that a bit more contrast between the, uh, the uh, more cool colors up top. And let's go ahead and add in a couple more details here around our eyes, as well as our lips. Now this would be the point where you'd want to be a little bit more specific with your paint so that you're not kind of overpainting in certain areas. It starts to feel uh, really nice and clean if you can get a nice line between your lips and the rest of your face here. Maybe go a little bit more saturated on our color selection. For adding freckles, you could use something like an alpha or some kind of stamp to uh, kind of make things a little bit easier, but I think doing them by hand is a little bit more smart uh, just because you kind of have a little bit more control and you know if you use an alpha it's always going to be exactly the same uh, whereas by doing it by hand you can have a little bit more uh, variation and uh, randomness to it. Uh, so I'm just going to add in uh, very quickly uh, a few freckles here with uh, all the same brush size and then uh, just change my brush size a little bit to be smaller. Maybe grab something a little bit darker and then uh, start to add in a bit more variation. And you know, this is just one uh, example of some uh, additional details that we could add here. We've looked at a couple others uh, in terms of some of the additional information that we can add to our character's face but uh, I think some freckles just really quickly can add uh, a bit more character to, uh, to your face, to your skin. So like I said, there's a lot of different moods that you can go for, uh, for your character's paint, uh, just by playing around with your contrast, as well as adding little details like freckles or makeup uh, can start to really just change the mood and feel of the entire character. So I know painting can be really difficult, but I would say try to focus a little bit more on quantity over quality because a lot of the issue with just painting in general typically ends up just being a problem with mileage. You just need to get that mileage up, practice a bit more, and don't be super worried about that end result. Just kind of focus on practicing a bit more and I promise it'll come to you with time. I really hope you guys were able to get something out of this video. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. And if you're interested in learning more about character creation, check out my Gumroad. There's a link down below. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.